Welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Jennifer Kirk. And I'm Dave Lees. And on today's show, we're going to have a bit of an interesting conversation. Our guest today is Mary Beth Marley. Mary Beth competed at the World Championships with Rockne Brubaker in 2012. And then she quietly left the sport and not much has ever been said about the reasons why. There have been all sorts of rumors about her... Uh, leaving the sport. Uh, she had some difficulties. And I think it's going to be an interesting conversation to have. Mary Beth uh, became a para skater right after she was a junior for the first year. She had just missed nationals. Then she teamed up with Rockney. That next year they were competing in Poland. They were at the Four Continents. And the following year they were on the Grand Prix. She was very much the replacement for Kiana McLaughlin. And Rockney Brubaker is widely considered to be one of the most talented para skaters we have. And everyone, uh, oh, you know, wants him to have so much success. I think you could see how this could start to go a little bit wrong. Yeah, it's a little bit questioning just because he was so well known, and I think he he and Kiana had kind of a messy breakup. We don't know all the details of it. And then he quickly started skating with Mary Beth. They showed so much promise. They were really the future of American pair skating, and then suddenly. She left. She ended that partnership. They had even competed together a month before she left the sport in a summer event. So I think this is really Mary Beth time to set the record straight, tell us what she's been up to over the past year, and share some insight into that partnership as well. Mary Beth, welcome to the skating lesson. Hi, it's so nice to be here. Yeah, we're thrilled to have you. So many people know you from your pair career with Rockne Brubaker, but before that, you were a very well-known up-and-coming skater. You were second and novice behind Kiri Baga at the 29 uh, National Championships. And at that time, uh, when you teamed up with Rockne, you were really becoming a well-known junior. Why did you make the decision to become a para skater? <laughs> That's a funny story. Um, well, that my first year junior, I got fifth at sectionals, and I was... I'm quite devastated. And so I was training and I just started getting all my triples and I was actually at the Broadmoor competing when the release came out. And at first I was actually really offended that they even considered me because I'm like, that means they're not, that I must not be a good single skater anymore because single skaters don't do pairs unless they're not good anymore, which is not true <laughs> at all. And um, then my coach sat me down and was like, you know, this is a really good opportunity you really need to just try it. And then I was like, okay, I'll try it. And then I kind of just, after a couple, like a month of, after I finished like my major competitions, I had like a week and a half to learn all the pair stuff because I've never done anything like that before. And then I had to go to the tryout. <laughs> well, how were you approached to skate with Rockney? How did they get in contact with you? Um, well, people have like, before I've tried to contact like my coaches before like saying oh we would is she interested and stuff like that but basically like since I was competing there a lot of like Mitch Moyer and a lot of the people were already right there and were talking to my coach at the time with Cindy Caprell and you know they kind of just were like hey should, would she consider this you know she's really this she would be really great for this and then I was when I came around to it Rafney at the time you know he probably I just turned 15, you know, and he was older and, you know, he knows it's kind of hard skating with an up and coming skater, you know, you have to learn a lot of lessons. And then once we figured all that out, we both kind of just got contacted and that kind of how it worked out. Well, it was reported you took all of your pair tests in one day. Is that true? And what was that day like? <sighs> that is true to an extent. Okay. I took all the um like the first test all the way through novice okay in one day so I'm pretty sure that's I can't even remember because it was so fast but I'm pretty sure it was four tests and it wasn't like I got breaks it was like we had a just like a private test session and there was a pit like three judges and um it was with my coach the pair coach who was coaching me who Jeremy who would coach Kiri and Taylor last year at nationals and stuff and um it was literally one after the other. Like, it was just kind of like a quadruple run-through. It was a like quad run-through. You're in good shape. It was just now. kept going. Yeah, I just kept going. And I practiced singles all that morning, too. So it just kept going. And then I had enough time when I moved out to California where we did, um, I skated the junior test with Rocky and then, like, 
a week later, I skated the senior test. So pretty much it was all in one day, but it was very fast. Well, there were a lot of rumors about who Rockney was going to be skating with at that time. There were reports that Sasha Cohen was uh, considering trying out with him and that they were skating together for a show. And when Naomi Arnon was on our show, she mentioned that Femi had another tryout when she was looking for when he was looking for a partner. Did you have to compete with anyone to skate with Rockney? Um, they actually never. I know that he had tryouts mm-hmm. before me, and I know there were tryouts after me. Mm-hmm. And I know once he skated with me, he canceled those tryouts. And that um, that from what I heard, the tryouts in the very beginning, like, they just weren't very... There wasn't, like, a good connection or, like, it just didn't seem right at the time. And he, we skated on our, like, three-day tryout. He called me then. He called my mom the next day. I was like, I really want to skate with her. So, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you soon made the decision to move from your home in Illinois to Southern California to train with John Nix, Jenny Mino, and Todd San. How difficult was that transition, and did your parents move with you? Okay, um, that transition was difficult, but obviously it's not difficult living in California because it's beautiful. Um, but my mom went with me. My dad stayed at home, so my family basically split for those two years. And my brother came out like after six months um, that we've been living there. So he, he changed schools and um, he went to middle school out there. And then before I stopped, he moved back for other reasons. And um, it was very trying on my family. It was not the easiest thing, especially for my parents. You know, no one wants to be separated. And, um, yeah, it was just and, um, really difficult because my family, like, we've lived so close my entire life, you know, like, my grandparents and, like, all my aunts and uncles are, like, 10 minutes away. So it's kind of weird being on the whole side of a different, like, Other whole side different of the area. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's those sacrifices we make for skating. Yeah. John Nix, he's such a legendary coach. So what was it like training with him every day? Oh, my gosh. He is amazing. He, uh, like, the one word, like, if you have one word to describe a person, like, mine is, like, just respect. He's, like, he's awesome. But at first, I was, like, terrified. <laughs> I was, like, because I've never had, like, anyone really, um, like, strict or that presentable, like, coaching-wise. And I was just, oh, my gosh, I was so intimidated at first. And for it took me about a couple months to, like, warm up to him. And then... By that time, like, after that couple months passed, I started warming up. And then, you know, it was really great training with him. And he has so much wisdom, and he know he knows what he's doing. Like, he's got this down to a science. And, um, yeah, he's amazing to work with, and it was an amazing opportunity to work with him. He seems like he wants you guys to really respect him, and he demands that. And I think that's yes. good from an athlete. I was watching an interview with you and Rockney, and you said that when you were skating singles, the only partner you would ever wanted to skate with was Rockney Brubaker. Why was that? What was it about him that was so appealing? Um, it was a running joke in the family because I was like insistent that I would never do pairs. I am singles all the way. Like there would be no chance on this earth that I would do pairs. But um, the year I made it, the novice year when I went to nationals and got second, I stayed that, you know, we compete early, so I stayed the entire week and watched, and I saw Rocky and Kiana compete for the first time in, like, person. I was like, oh, my gosh, these are, they're amazing and just so fast and everything. And he, like, he just looked so strong in the lifts, and it never looked like she was, there was any doubt that anything was going to happen. So that's basically what, um... I saw, and I was—it was just like a running joke because um, Rockney and Kiana were like perfect. <laughs> they were—I was never supposed to happen, and um, it was supposed to, like they were supposed to go to Olympics and everything. And you know, then I kind of stepped in, so that's why I was supposed to be like, "Well, that's never going to happen, so might as well just say it." <laughs> you never know. Fortunately, you really fortunate. don't. <laughs> One of the notable aspects of your partnership was the significant age difference between the two of you. How would you describe your relationship on and off the ice? Um, 
there, I mean, our, we were definitely, there was a nine years age difference. And at times it was uh, a little hard, but we, we got along pretty well on and off the ice. Uh, definitely, we were both hard workers. We both um, had, we really had strong goals and very determined. So we really worked well together. So it was pretty good, you know. I mean, usually when we were off the ice, you know, we both did our, um, you know, Rockney and I both like to do our own thing. So it was kind of like that. And um, on the ice, we just worked really hard. And um, that was basically, we just worked really hard. That's it. <laughs> Junior ladies are known for being a bit inconsistent with their triple jumps as they're getting them. What was it like having to learn to time your jumps with another person? Well, I was I was not consistent with my jumps. <laughs> so um, that was just very difficult. And on top of that, I'm uh, my personality, I'm quite stubborn. So um, that wasn't too easy at all. I didn't like that I had to change my timing or change the steps that I had already practiced so many years on. I did not like it one bit. I didn't like someone jumping so close to me. and But I got used to it, and then eventually it just becomes, you know, natural. And, you know, you do it every day, so you come around to it. But um, at first I did not like it, and it was very difficult to um, get accustomed to changing my timing and stuff like that. So it was not the easiest. Well, you talk about the transition to getting accustomed to changing your time and doing the side-by-side -side jumps. What was Rockney like as a partner? What was it like skating with somebody every day? It was, you know, I was so used to, um, you know, skating on my own. I go to the rink every day, skate on my own, uh, everything, my own, my skating, everything. When you have a partner, you know, you have to worry about, oh, well, how's he feeling today? What's he doing today? What's today going to be like? And, you know, you have to coordinate your schedules. You, you know, you don't have the same body. So you're like, how, well, she, he might be sore. She might be sore. So it's, it was a little different. And definitely, you know, that's another thing that the age difference um, brought in is, you know, I was, I was, when I first moved out there, I mean, I just turned 15. So I was a person who liked to, and not always the safest thing to do. I was, when I practice, I like, went all out. I pounded everything and I wanted to repeat and repeat and repeat. And, you know, Rockney was at the stage where, because he's competed so much that, you know, you don't have, he's learned you don't have to do that. So there was a little friction with there because I'm like, no, we need to do it again. Mm. No, it's not going to be good. We have to do it again. And he was like, no, it's okay. So there were um, a little bit like practicing styles were a different, but as we, you know, as the years went on, you know, we kind of got that a little better. So confidence grew. Well, you spoke earlier about watching Kiana and Rockney skate together, and obviously they were supposed to be our big Olympic pair team heading yeah. into it. They were on those Coke endorsements. Mm -hmm. And at the end of their partnership, it was a little bit messy on TV. The cameras were always focusing on Kiana looking upset, making a lot of mistakes. They just loved to zoom in on her to get that tear. How aware were you of the reasons of their dissolution? I, that's one thing that... I have no clue of. Mm -hmm. um, Rockney, um, you know, that's one thing, one of Rockney's strengths is that he's so good at, like, the past is the past and, like, moving forward. And, like, we move on, I have a goal, keep going. And um, I, I asked about it many times because I wanted to know. As anyone would. <laughs> I wanted it's to like know. It's like the ex-girlfriend. Do you want to know all about her? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you're exactly right. And, um, you know, very discreet info, you know, I mean, I, all I know, you know, training stuff and, you know, pressure, but I, you didn't, there was really like no information given. Like there wasn't a final answer of what No, happened. and me, I like gossip and like stuff like that. So <laughs> You're a girl. <laughs> that was, I didn't get that. Well, given their substantial success, uh, Rockney and Keanu, how much pressure did you feel to fill her role and to emulate that success immediately that he and she were able to accomplish? Um, I did feel that a lot. <laughs> I not only put a lot of pressure on myself, just my personality doing that because i a perfectionist. I like doing the best I can and I wanted I knew how great they were and you know I would like 
when I was watching them like on YouTube, when I was trying to learn all the stuff, I'd be like, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to be able to look like this? And on top of like the elements, their connection, mm -hmm. that was like, I'm like, I don't think I'll ever be able to do that. And eventually I started learning how to, but I felt a great amount of pressure to fill her shoes because she had so strong in lift positions, which was one of my weaker areas. I was not very strong in lift positions because, you know, those take time to learn and time to build that strength, and I didn't have time. And um, I felt a lot of pressure with that. So, it's understandable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, prior to your partnership, you had never competed at nationals at the senior level. Suddenly, you're going off to Poland to get a qualifying score, and you're in the final group at nationals. You, a lot of your, a lot of you, for your competitors, you know, when Felicia Zhang became a pair skater, she competed at juniors for a whole year before they went to seniors. Kiri Baga competed for a full year, and then they went to a senior B. They weren't going to four continents in their, you know, Perfect. right away. Did you ever yeah. feel rushed? Um, at the time, no, <laughs> I, now I look back and I'm like, oh, I could have maybe enjoyed the moments a little more, but, um, I was just so happy, like with the pole in one, I was just so happy to get the jacket that <laughs> it was like, that like won it all over. And actually being like, that pole in thing was so sudden like, I was like, oh, my gosh, I got to train for singles at Nationals, too. Like, I can't be doing this. Like, I just started doing clean programs again. Like, no. And then, um, but then they're like, well, you'll get back. And I was like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and I actually got really sick after Poland. And I was, like, sick during that Nationals, like, really bad. But I just, I don't know. I didn't feel rushed. I felt like, oh, my gosh, my dreams are coming, too. I was almost, like, it felt like it wasn't real. Like, I couldn't believe this was happening because six months ago I was at home trading like an everyday, like I was for the, like my normal life was. And now I am in Taipei at Four Continents. And I am, I just got fourth in nationals being pairs, which I've never done. It just felt not real, you know? So I don't think it was rush. I just, I don't, it just didn't seem real at the time. The two of you definitely showed a lot of promise that year. Were you satisfied with your results? Uh, the first year? Yes. Um, I was extremely thrilled. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> like, I didn't even expect that. And I will say, though, I was like, I can't believe I tripped on crossovers. I can't believe I tripped <laughs> on crossovers. Like, just splat. <laughs> Always um, those little things. Oh my! But I mean, that really does show the inexperience I have because those are the tracking things that... To that tracking you work as a pair skater on every day and like that takes years and years and years to just get with a partner and that just showed my inexperience and um, I was really pleased with that. Um, I was just thrilled that I, one, I made it through that long week because I skated junior and then went on to do pairs and I skated really good programs and I was just like an overall package was good, and I was just really happy to skate well. So yeah, I was. Were your Wait. coaches satisfied? Mm hmm. I my coaches seemed really thrilled. Like they were happy that you know, like we made a good like impression because we really haven't like competed like in a big like United States venue or like anything really big. So I think they were just happy like to see that I really I didn't fold under pressure and I rose to the challenge and I did what I needed to do. I think so. I think they were happy. Yeah. We talk about that week being like a marathon and you at that event also competed in the junior ladies uh, event placing fifth. Yet after nationals, you chose to quit single skating to focus all your attention on the pair. Why did you make that choice and how difficult was it at the time? Um, I made that choice because um, I, I was starting to feel how hard it was to manage both. It was very difficult to manage both well. Now, and the main like saying that I said to myself that I'm like, well, I don't want to be fifth and fourth for the rest of my life. I don't want to do both well. I want to be great at one. And so I was like, you know, I've made this commitment and I really love pairs. I really want to just focus on this. And 
it was really difficult for me. And, you know, I wanted, I really wanted to stay in it. I wanted to stay in singles and because, I mean, it was just really good for me. I loved doing all the triples. I loved learning all this stuff. And um, I just knew it was for the best training-wise and stuff like that. So I was trying to look at the bigger picture. In your second season together, you competed at Skate America. So in a little more than a year, you went from learning pairs to competing against the best skaters in the world at Skate America, which is a really big deal to get uh, for any American skater. Did you feel prepared? Um, I actually, I felt, I thought we felt pretty good going into Skate America. Um, there was a good amount of stuff, but when I got there, I just could have, like, I've never done anything like that before. Like, I was, hadn't done any Junior Grand Prix yet because of, like, the singles I was up and coming, but hadn't made that, like, breakthrough yet. And I just never, like, done anything like that. I was like, oh my God, like, this is, I'm skating against, like, Olympians here. Like, these are, these are these people. And, like, it was just amazing experience. And uh, we trained pretty well going into that. And I was just overtaken by everything. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. So, yeah. Well, you skated very well in the short program, but struggled in the long. How did oh, you yeah. feel about the experience? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, the short, I mean, I love that short program. It was just so much fun to do. And... I just loved that night. And then long, I just, I just like got in my head way too much. I was like, oh, well, I, I have to do this. Like, and I like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe I let that go because I like, if you look at yourself as a skater and like can pin out your weaknesses and strengths, I can say one of my strengths was when I had to compete under pressure. Like I usually like 80% of the time, did a really good job under it and like n like I just love competing under pressure like that was my thing and that one time I didn't and I was just like I was so mad I was like oh my gosh like why did I let that go like you just can't do that so the short I was pretty happy with but the long I was I was pretty disappointed in myself in because you know you don't want to do something like that you know it's okay to make mistakes but you don't want to just let it go and I let it go and I definitely learned from that experience for number one. I mean, it was a great learning experience that you have to stay focused in the moment at all times, no matter what. And um, I just learned a lot from that. So I was pretty happy with the experience, even though I would have liked to have done better. I was happy with it overall. When one enters a new job or relationship, there's often a honeymoon phase and your mistakes are kind of forgiven at first. And you mentioned uh, tripping on a, you know, on tracking earlier. <laughs> was there ever a moment when you realized that those days were kind of over and you were now expected to be perfect? Uh, um, yes and no. I mean, I definitely, there was definitely a honeymoon stage for sure. Like, I mean, everything was just easy. Oh, we're learning. It's all good. <laughs> you know, so there was definitely that. But um, there was never like a defining moment where I was like, oh, wow. Okay, this is time to get like serious. Yeah. yeah, this is actually like a thing. Like this isn't just just learning. We actually have to do yeah. something. So, um, I I could say definitely after Skate America, I, that was probably around that time because I just realized, whoa, this is not just skating to skate at little competitions and hope to go. In. You're like skating for your country, like. This is a lot bigger than what you've ever done, so you have to really, and you have someone else skating with you, and they're depending on you. So Rocky never, like, made it, like, never, like, put more pressure on me or anything. He never um, tried to make me feel uncomfortable. He never did anything, like, that added more stress to it. So that was pretty good, but, I mean, there wasn't really, like, I wouldn't say, like, there was any time that he really, like, made it like, oh, well, I am definitely have to be perfect for you now. But I would say that there were, I started feeling the pressure and internalizing it within myself to be perfect. No one ever forced me to do that. I started doing that. And then I started realizing in my head that I would have to be perfect. So I think there was, a, yeah, that's why I say yes and no, because it was a little bit of both. <laughs> I think, yeah, as a skater, what I'm getting from you, you can kind of feel it, even if so, no one like overtly tells you the pressure's yeah. on or you're in that <laughs> next stage, you sense it. You can feel how people are yeah. keeping you around you and you think, okay, mm -hmm. it's, it's 
it's a big time now. Big stage. Yeah, and, I agree with that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, there's because no one ever. It's kind of like the, you know those jokes, like everyone like says something, but then like, oh, no pressure. Like, yeah. no one ever like says like, oh, there's all this pressure on, but you like feel it. You're like, oh, yeah. Great. It's never <laughs> like a sit down. Okay, Mary Beth, no. now the pressure's on. You guys, are, <laughs> but you, yeah, you sense it. And talking about pressure at nationals that season, you guys, the spotlight was on you. You were really in that hunt for that national title, and you won the short program, skating really well. But you struggled a bit in the free skate, finishing second overall. At the time, were you pleased with the results, or was that at all a disappointment? I was just happy to make the world team. <laughs> I was, I couldn't, because honestly, I thought it wasn't good enough to make it. Like, I'm yeah. like, oh, you know, that's, you can't have two mistakes like that. You know, even if we were ahead in the, you know, you just, you can't. And um, so I was like, I was pretty, I, when I heard, like, I calculated, and I saw the results and, like, put it in my head. I'm like, oh, my gosh, that's enough to win. And not win, I mean, get second. But, yeah. like, and to me, winning is the going to world, being on the world team. And... Uh, I was just so thrilled. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to be going to Worlds at 16 years old. Like, I can't believe that. I like, And also, more, it was almost like more than a medal. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what my parents have done, what everyone's done for me has really paid off. Like, this is going somewhere. This is, like, it's working. Like, I'm not disappointing what they set out to do. So I'm, I'm really it's working so they can be happy in what I was doing. So, and then as a team, it was working out. So, I mean, I was still pretty pleased, you know, afterwards. And then you have that after fact, you know, after like the next day, you're like, darn it. Why well, can't yeah. this, just, just that little bit. Two less <laughs> mistakes. Yeah. I know. And, and then I was looking and like, I'm really, I'm really big into like numbers and to like, like technologizing everything. And, um, I was looking at the sheets. I'm like, Oh, just one more thing, just that would have done it. And then I was just like, uh, cause I'm, I'm, I'm a competitor. Like I want to win. <laughs> and, um, of course I was super happy in the moment cause I've made the world team and go in the four continents and all this great other stuff. But then I was like afterwards, darn. <laughs> but yeah, so I was, I was pleased. We talk about the excitement of going to the world championships. Describe that experience being at worlds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Worlds was just like a whole new ball game. Like I, especially being in Nice, Nice is beautiful. Like I love just the atmosphere and everything. But I will say I love competing. Like I try for like the adrenaline and everything for like that. But world, that world was I for the long program. And a little bit for the shore, I was like, I don't want to do this. I'm way too nervous to do this. I can't. <laughs> and then, like, I saw the camera going, you know, back and forth. Like, so, like, um, back and forth on the ice. And I saw all these cameras and all these. I was just like, oh, my, I can't do this. This is, this is crazy. <laughs> I, I'm not ready for this. And, I, like, I've never felt that. I've always been, like, anxious before. I've never really gotten nervous. But, like, I was nervous. And I, um, I just was taking in the experience and, trying to learn from, you know, all, I mean, I was skiing with the German pair team, the Russians, everyone. I mean, I was trying to learn from all that and see what I can gain from this experience. But, you know, there was a lot of good and bad. I think we definitely, I could have prepared better going into that world championships. It was definitely a struggle because I was, this is something I wasn't used to. And, um, I think that what's led to probably some of the nerves cause I didn't think I was ready. And, um, I just, then I try to enjoy it as much as I can. And like, you know what, I'm going to make this the best competition I can. I'm going to try and skate the best I can and just really try and give it everything I have. Cause there's, I don't want to regret anything after this. Well, you guys achieved a top 10 finish in 2012. This in general was a really successful season for you. Meddling at Nationals, meddling at Four Continents. After Worlds, you guys did a few shows. You even competed, I think, a long program at the LA Open. Things yes. seemed to be going great. And then <laughs> you left the sport. And many people were shocked by that because it seems like you had all this momentum. You're really the future yeah. of American pair skating. So why did you choose to leave skating? What happened? Um, there was definitely some issues going on with me. I was definitely in a situation where I was not mentally or physically healthy anymore. And I just was, it was taking a toll on everything and it was affecting my skiing. It was affecting Rock News and I like partnership 
it was really making lots of friction. And I'm not the type of person that's going to come out and say, like, oh, I'm feeling this. Can someone help me with this? I'm one not to tell people my problems. I'm one that I want to control every situation and really um, just, I'm going to say, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm okay, when really I'm not. And I definitely, that kind of snowballed over the course of just everything, you know? And I, I was, we weren't, I mean, we skated. <laughs> I know this is bad to say, but like LA Open was probably like the best thing we've ever skated. Like I was not skating well. I was not physically strong anymore. It was just not, like I was getting weak in every place possible and I was just taking a toll on me. I was really becoming super unhappy with what was happening. I felt so much stress and that I was ruining my family and that I was ruining all this stuff for everyone. And then I decided, you know, I have to make what's best for me and no one wants, no one wants me to be unhappy. And I know that something has to be changed. So I went into the rink that day and, like, and I told Rockney I couldn't do it anymore. And he supported me in this decision. Obviously, he was disappointed, but he wa overall wants my, you know, health and happiness. So I am I thank him for, you know, not being mad or anything like that. But, you know, there was definitely situations that was not the best for me. And, you know, I definitely was not vocalizing. So that's why I probably came to a shock to a lot of people. Well, one of the things I do remember at that time was that you wrote me an email after I had shared some of the things that I had gone through with an eating disorder, struggling with staying healthy, both emotionally and physically. And I thought that was just so brave that you would reach out and I could feel that conflict within you of what should I do? Should I go to this next step? Because there's so much pressure at that point in your career. You talk about keeping things in and keeping things hidden. When did that kind of start for you? Um, it's always how I've been. It's never, it ne nothing causes, nothing like caused it. It's just wh who I've been my entire life. And, you know, I did write you that email because I was w reading your blogs and stuff and it was actually like someone was like there. I don't yeah. know, but it was, it, I, I thought I was really alone and stuff like that. And I was really scared because I'm like, I have to do this. Like, I can't, not now, I have to. And, um... I just realized that mm, that I have to do what's right, and obviously the path I was and if I was training well, I probably wouldn't have said anything still, but it was there was something obvious going on that no one knew, but like they knew something was wrong, so I mean it it wasn't like I was training well either, so I mean there kind of was like now I wasn't skating well, so now the one thing that I had is now like going away so I have to like now I really have to fix things and um I don't know I just I wrote that email because I was like you know I need I need to see what I need to do and stuff and then I was like you know what I'm going to take that next step I, and try I'm, and see I'm really proud of you because I sure. I was in a similar situation before uh, the Olympic season where you think mm -hmm. you have all of this momentum and but it really does start to affect your training on the ice and that's when that's yeah and you hard. don't and you don't think it will because you think you're like well you I think you're in control, control. <laughs> yeah and you know that's the one thing you know this it's just a way you cope with things it's not like U.S. figure skating or figure skating in general like causes this to happen no because so many healthy athletes are out there you know it's you know, it's extremely easy to be healthy in the sport. You know, just the way certain people deal with things. And I happen to be one of those people that does not do it in the right way. And, you know, that's something I have to be accountable for. I definitely can relate to that. Uh, full disclosure, um, Jenny and I actually met because I interviewed her um, a couple days when I was going through my own things before I went into the hospital. And she could probably tell you a lot of things about that interview. But I know that as a perfectionist, things happen and you try to hide it and hold everything together for a really long time. And then yeah. there's often an explosion and everything just comes out. And all of a sudden, all the, the secrets come yeah. out. <laughs> oh and my it God. definitely <laughs> happened with me um, in a public place. And it's, you there. know, one of the traumatic moments of my life. When did you start noticing that you had a problem? It's hmm. a good question. Um, I, you know, 
I not only was I trying to keep everyone out and like that's my thing, I was also like convincing myself like I'm just fine, this is what I do, you know, this is my thing, you know, and then I started realizing when, you know, it's really hard to think about when I actually thought because like literally like when I stopped skating, that's like when I decide, okay, this is because I was in denial, did not in denial that I was, you know, this something was wrong, you know, and um, I just kind of like, you know what, I have to like really face it. So I'm, I'm going to say like the true aha moment when there, there was no denial, there was no anything was probably the day I said I'm stopping. I have to stop right now. Had you ever thought about getting help earlier on and then talked yourself out of it? I know that my problems, <laughs> you know, were happening and then midterms were coming up and it was never the right time to deal with things. And, it, you know, finals were coming up and the next semester, you know, rolls into the next semester, midterms come up and things start getting progressively worse. How quickly did things progress with you? Uh, yeah, no, I never thought I was gonna, I was, <laughs> no, no, because I didn't want help. Like I again control mine <laughs> like yeah. I didn't want any of that and then when I like I started realizing you know it just it wasn't something was really wrong and I just was kind of like you know what there's never going to be a right time I can't ask them to like wait for me to like let's take this year I can't ask them to do that because one that's not helping them. It's not helping Rockney because Rockney has a dream. Like he has a dream to go to the Olympics and he is so determined and he is a great athlete and he deserves that, you know? And, um, I just, it wasn't the right time. There was like what you said, there's like never a right time. And I knew that, and I knew that it, it wouldn't change unless I really just like took a break. Mm -hmm. Nothing was going to change. And also I was, it was more, I was just feeling, you know, so much, I just needed to be like, I needed it something new in a way. And like, I thought everything would go away. Like I thought at the time I thought, well, well, it's cause I'm out here. And then once I go back home, then everything's going to be fine. But really, no, it's not, you know, you have to, it's not, that's why I say like, it wasn't the pressure. It wasn't figure skating. It wasn't, it wasn't anything like that. It was how I cope with things that happen in life. And you can't stop things from happening in life. It can't be perfect all the time. You know, you wish you can. You try to control them to be, but that's impossible to do. And I thought everything was going to change when I come. I'm like, oh, I don't have a pro And again, did I, I don't see. Now yeah. I'm fine with it. It's all good. And um, uh, I and then it, nothing changed. I still was mentally not healthy. I wasn't physically healthy. I was doing all sorts of now and then I would actually have to go to a full day of school which I haven't done since the third grade and that wasn't good and I didn't like that very much at all and um I just couldn't believe that this was happening I'm like oh oh this is this is it's not this and that's why it's how you deal with things and you really need to take the time to figure out what's going within yourself because nothing causes of course factors play in but um, it's how you perceive everything. It's how you deal. It's how you cope. And I dealt with it that way. Nothing else did that. <laughs> well, you, you speak about it so intelligently, and I, I really oh. applaud you for that because yeah. it's difficult uh, looking back on a disorder. And you talk about the denial. What length did you go to to keep it a secret? And what was that conversation like when you finally sat down with Rockney with your coaches and said, I have this problem and how shocked were they? Well, this kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier, like being a, like, it just blows up. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All of the wheels on the bus have fallen off. And you're just Listen, <laughs> I had to get in an ambulance in front of uh, the lunchtime <laughs> at school. So it is just, you know, there were some serious problems going on. That happened from the way that there were serious traumas that had happened months before that, you know, uh, was yeah, dealing with. So this yeah. was definitely one of those times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely one of those times and it wasn't necessarily with Jenny and Todd and Rockney it was more with my mom you know I just like I was I blew up <laughs> and um I when I told actually everyone was really in shock because anything that I dealt with I hid really I mean I was like a master at hiding like 
anything, any problem I had, anything, I just hid and said, nope, I'm fine. And then I would cover it up by, you know, skating well that day or, you know, working out really hard to show how dedicated I am or doing all this, you know, I would just, I would cover up and, and like no one knew. And um, so they were like really shocked. And the denial and what links, I went into extreme links to like to keep myself from thinking that, oh, I have like, there's so many lies I told myself, so many things that I've done that are totally not acceptable, you know, to do. And, but every time, it's just so weird, <laughs> you know, like, it's just crazy. <laughs> and I, I couldn't believe, like, I did those things, but at the time, like, I rationalized them and said, oh, they're okay, <laughs> you know, and they're not. And I was just like, you know what, once that denial, like, wears off, you're like, ooh, you're lucky that that didn't like blow up storm too like you're lucky that didn't cause anything else and so yeah there was I did some I did some extreme links yeah so, I will yeah oh I think we've all been there <laughs> anyone who's had addiction you look back and you think oh man that was not who I want to be today <laughs> yeah. but when you say you're somebody did you restrict what you were eating were you binging and purging how were you able like what what did your diet look like at the time and how were you able to get through those sessions um, well, depending on how I, it's what you call getting through. Cause as I said, at the end, I was not, I was not putting up lifts, not doing twists. I was not jump. I was literally like nothing on the ice. So I, you could definitely see like those sessions weren't there, but I somehow got through. Um, but it's really weird what I did. Like, um, I definitely struggled with food. I, I definitely did. And I have all my life. It's like I said, it's nothing that coaches, Rockney figures, nothing. It's something I've dealt with my entire life. And, you know, I still do to this day in a much, much different way, in a much, like, healthier way. But, you know, it's always still there. And um, I I kind of, kind of did it all. <laughs> um, so I just felt it was like one thing I just felt like if, one, it made me feel like I was perfect. And two, it just made me feel like I was in control. Mm -hmm. out, in and out of, even though, because everything, because I think denial played a lot into um, my, in my skating, like, kind of what you said, like, was it too fast? Like, of course, like, it felt like a dream, but I think, you know, it probably was fast, you know, things were probably faster than maybe they should have been taken, maybe not, I don't know. But that's the way they happened, and um, I don't regret any of it. I loved every experience from it, but I definitely just I took these things, these situations, and everything to just one make me seem like I was perfect, and to control what seemed out of control. So. Yeah, when you don't have those coping mechanisms in place as a kid, and then all of a sudden, I'm mean, just pressure in skating in general. <laughs> is extreme for the most healthy, mentally healthy person. And then when you don't have those kind of foundation building blocks, it's really mm -hmm. quite difficult. So did you feel that your problems with food, did they get worse when you were skating pairs than skating singles? I mean, did you feel pressure as a pair skater? We see so many pair skaters mm -hmm. wanting to be little to fit yeah. a certain mold. Mm -hmm. um, I never, like I said, no one ever pressured me to do anything like that, you know? Because I was always extremely tiny. I was always, you know, everyone, I mean, I was known, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm 4'10 now, but I was 4'9 back then, because uh, I grew when I stopped skating one inch. That counts, though. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was, I mean, I was extremely thin and, you know, very in shape, but no one ever pressured me. No, I never felt pressure, never felt pressure from Rackney, which I thought I would, like, going in the pairs. Like, I thought that, you know, the guy's going to be like, hey, you need to drop a couple pounds because I can't lift you today. I, Rackney was so good about that. He never did anything like that, you know. He was just really respectable about that. And, you know, it doesn't matter what sport you do. You have to be healthy. You have to you have to either watch what you eat, you have to watch what how much you eat so that you don't lose weight or don't, you know, any sport, any environment. It's not just figure skating. It's not any of that, you know. And actually, I don't, I feel like certain ways got worse only because that's, 
as me getting older. Um, I don't, I never would say, I don't think that pears elevated it because um, nothing, like I said, no one ever tried the force pressure on me. It's how I, per I perceived it so much greater than it actually was. Like really, I go in my mind right now, I'm like, oh my gosh, like you made everything 10 times, not even 10 times, 100 times harder than you needed it to be. And um, I actually would say that it actually got worse after I stopped skating. It got a lot worse because what I've known my entire life is was gone. What I thought was going to be all better, happy rainbows and sunshine, sunshine was going to be, was not. And um, so I actually, I, I feel that my issues mentally and physically got worse. And um, that's why I keep saying, like, you know, it's the person. It's the personality. It's how you cope, the coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not one thing of course certain environment certain factors do um and play into it, it. Yeah. yeah but um you know i have to be accountable in that you know there's plenty of healthy figure skaters out there i was not mentally or physically one of those <laughs> but um i definitely you know um there's a little bit i'm obviously there's more pressure in pairs because not it's not because they think you're better that way. It's it's really a safety reason. Like a, a poor guy is lifting him you above his head. Like you know you don't. It's safety for both of you guys. You know and you know it's just it's just the way it's figure skating. You have to watch what you eat and it's okay. And it's just how you deal with it. You really need to voice and be like you know what healthy is always the best way. And you know like I said it got worse when I stopped skating. So it's not like um, I'm blaming like, oh, well, this is why if I never done this, this is, and then, no, it's actually, it's just how I, how I deal and how I actually did deal because I really don't do that stuff anymore. But, um, you know, it's basically, I'm actually quite thankful for all the stuff figure skating has done for me and all the stuff, lessons I've learned from all my coaches, you know, I have a range of coaches from Ella, from Chicago area, from California area, you know, I've learned so many lessons from them, and without those like, lessons, I wouldn't be able to um, do what I'm doing today, or be able to look back at all my experiences and be like, oh, wow, I, I that was really amazing at the time, and so really, it's my accountability, my um way that I dealt with things and of course if I could go back like it and really like pinpoint a day it started it start like it started so young like it's like I said so it's nothing it's just the person and you know it's not like bad thing it's nothing to be ashamed of it's just something you have to deal with you know and I think that once you realize that you have to deal with this that you start coming better each day I think it's very mm -hmm. insightful and when Ty Babylonia was on our show she talked about for her, her seed was that when she was weighed as a pair skater. Were you ever weighed? And you talk about that things started early on. So what was your particular seed? Um, okay. Well, I was, I wished every day when I was little that I was that girl that was stick thin, like the size of your pinky, and you know, not muscular at all, and just like, you know, just like a little girl, you know, straight up and everything. I was never like that. I was a little chunky butter. I, I, I was, I was chunky as a child. I was not thin at all. And, um, you know, as you get older, you definitely start to notice that you're like, oh, and then I started skating, you know, and naturally you just, you know, you get fit and stuff like that. And then, um, because of my size and that I'm short. <laughs> Any weight that's put on with me is noticed, and um, people weighed me, but that was only because, um, you know, you have to, you, sometimes you just have to do what is necessary if you want to be the best, and um, I took that to an extreme. I never needed to do that. Um, it was only, people only did that because, um, one, trying to maintain health, trying to maintain a consistency in practice, you know? you We could lie to ourselves and say, oh, well, if 
five pounds don't affect my double axle tomorrow, and yes, it will. <laughs> and but um, it will it will a little bit, but you have to if that does happen because it's normal. It's normal for that stuff to happen. You have to learn to adjust to that, but you have to do it in a healthy way. And I didn't. And growing, and especially during those years where you would you know hit like puberty and stuff, and like I was really active and I was very scared to be like that because it seemed like everyone that did that you know wasn't as good as they were so I was quite scared of that and I think that you know people I know I know some coaches still weigh um I did get weighed a lot but it's not I took it to an extreme it was never they never like put the scale down and was like okay Mary Beth you (laughs) need to you need to not eat for the rest, like, next three days. Like, no one ever said that to me. No one ever advertised that. No one ever promoted that (laughs) anywhere, any part of figure skating, never. You know, somewhere in this mind, that's what was said. And I have no clue because no one ever even said anything close to that. You know, you know, it was just, it's, I I thought that, though. (laughs) Well, I think sometimes in this skating world, you do note, you hear things from different skaters. Just they'll oh, say yeah. things like, oh, I'm so fat today, or oh, I lost weight, <laughs> or I do this or that. So you know it's around you, even if somebody doesn't overtly state it, because I don't think anyone yeah. would say, don't eat for food. <laughs> but you talked a little bit earlier about leaving skating and sitting down with Rockney in that day. How bad had things gotten at that point? And when you told your mom and you felt like things were just falling under control. Did you go immediately into treatment? Did you start to see a therapist? You talk about moving home to Chicago. What was that transition like? And what was an average day like in the summer of 2012 before you quit skating? <sighs> well, summer of 2012. And actually, this, the beginning of the summer, summer started out fantastic. Like, literally, it just, we, like, things started clicking, programs started working. The long program that we had set was just, I never felt more connected to a program than that. Like, I just loved that program so much. That long program meant everything to me. Like, and I just loved the story. It was just, I just thought it was perfect. And um, we started, then the summer started, you know, getting into more training, you know, You got your Grand Prix assignments now. And, you know, things started coming in and, like, you know, I definitely, you know, and nothing, like, nothing nothing weird training-wise changed. It wasn't like they were pushing me harder. It wasn't this, but I felt like, well, I want to make worlds again. I want to do this again. I want to be better than, I want to make sure that no one can ever say anything again. I want to make sure that everyone, I am, you know, I am, what they've seen so far. I want to keep improving. So I definitely, I would wake up, I would go for a run, I would come back, I would eat a little, and then I would go skating, and then I would come back, I would go to work out, and then I, I was obsessed with hot yoga, like obsessed. <laughs> so is Dave. <laughs> Beyond, like I literally like Every teacher knew me exactly by name. They knew every story. Like, it was just, I, and it didn't, and it also, considering that the hot, like, our apartment, like, there was a park and then the hot yoga place. Like, you literally just walked across the street and it was there. So, I just, like, lived there after skating. So, I was obsessed with that and that really drained me. I was just tired all the time. Like, I was tired and I was starting to really get depressed. Like, I don't know why because wasn't like anything horrible or traumatic was happening but in my mind I was not I wasn't what I wanted to be I don't know that still but I wasn't really where I thought I should have been and so I just it almost kept like it kept steamrolling into uh, some monster that didn't need to be there you know and I really thought about it and when I stopped when um I told Rocky and stuff and I told my mom, I was, I came to the point that I had a problem, but I still had denial and stuff. So I told my mom, like, you know, this is only, I did this only for skating. And uh, it's all going to go away, I promise. So, like, my parents didn't, like, put me into, like, I didn't need, I didn't, like, 
they weren't because I told them that they like they wanted to trust me. So they 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 put me in a couple there uh, some I had some therapy and stuff like that, but it wasn't like what I should have been in. And then um, for how severe it got at the end. And um, I definitely uh, think that, um, I don't know, but it's kind of hard to think back exactly because it's, it's kind of like a really like weird, it was like a weird summer, had every, how everything was happening. But, um, you know, there were certain situations that I certainly should have taken, certain paths I should have taken. And um, like I said, it actually got worse after skating because I just lost everything in, that I had and loved. And I just thought, you know, I was blaming everyone and everything, and that's not the case. And I really come full circle around that, you know what, you, I really perceived things and coped with things really in an unhealthy way. And it has nothing to do because I love figure skating. I love skating. Like, I still skate. I still I skate for me, I skate, I coach, I do all this stuff. And like before I thought I would never do any of that stuff again. And, um, cause I was just blaming and mad at everybody. And I was just, I felt emotions that I never felt, but didn't want to, I felt bad for feeling them. I don't know why, but I just felt like, like I shouldn't, or I'm not allowed to. And, um, I know I just kept, kept pushing, kept pushing myself to be something that obviously there's a problem and then you know I, I finally got the help that I needed and eventually and that's how I started coming around into everything that um I feel right now and I'm just so thankful for all of what figure skating has done because I have a life in it that I love that I can't be happier with mm -hmm. I think it's really insightful and, you know, fantastic that you've really come around. Have you learned how to treat yourself better? I know that you talked about how you made things worse than they were. I know personally I've always been a person who, you know, really likes to be, you know, beat yourself up and really likes to, you know, yeah. make every problem 10,000 times worse if it's just something little. So have you learned how to um, treat yourself better? Yes. I, I've definitely, you know, it's always a work in progress, you know. I mean, there's never one day you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm here. Yay. <laughs> never have to worry about that again, you know. And I'm also, that's actually probably one of the things I have to work on most is that I like to wrap things up in, like, pretty little boxes and then put them in the corner. And they're not going to ever happen again, which is not true. Like, you have to you have to learn from experiences. Things aren't just over. You know, you have to, you know, it takes time. And so um, I was like, hmm, I've definitely learned – how to cope exactly, I mean, in a very healthy way. I've learned how to, you know, react to situations, how not to hold things in, how to voice, how to, you know, realize, know those points where, you know, things are, like, really going out of proportion. And um, I just, you know, I've, I've learned my warning signs because I've let myself not be in that denial, you know. And also, it's really helpful being in such a great sport that allows me to do something I love so that I feel like I have something again. And I'm so thankful for everything that it gives. Mm -hmm. it What's your relationship oh. with Rockney like today? Um, uh, I'm sure, you know, he's busy and, you know, um, he has a goal in mind and he will definitely – He's going to achieve that goal, and he's going to do everything that he wants to do, and um, I hope he's doing well, but uh, I really haven't, like, talked to him. <laughs> I'm sure he's doing great. You know, I know him and Stefania are doing great. I mean, all I can say is by guessing, but yeah. um, I'm, and I wish him the best, so. Well, take us through the recovery and the treatment process. What sort of treatment did you eventually end up getting and how has the way you approach food in your body changed over the past year? Um, well, I definitely, um, I definitely, uh, I just went through a lot of therapy, mm -hmm. a lot of therapy and a lot of recovery and definitely, I mean, especially there's a group of friends and, a, uh, I mean, my coaches and a group of friends in California, like if they did not do certain things, like I wouldn't be here right now in this mindset to um, 
say all that I'm saying because I thank them so much for that, even though at the time I was just in a really bad place. And um, I was, I just, I had, we just had a bunch of therapy and I mean, I was not a nice person. <laughs> I was not a nice person. I was mean. I was mean to my mom, mean to my dad. I literally put my parents through every bit of torture possible in this past year. You know, like, I don't know how much worse I could have gotten. <laughs> like, like, just, just like, a mean person like to my edge is weird and like literally I've done things that like my brother will never be able to get away with anything because I've like pa- like I've shown my parents like this is what people like teenagers do so like I'm like my poor brother is like never gonna do anything wrong because like I've done everything in the book because I was just I was just so rebellious and just not good not good but um uh these uh, it's, I just went through a lot of therapy. I'm thankful for the therapy I had during the week of nationals because um, that was extremely tough. I was like a wreck. I was ex- because I was at a point where I like regretted the decision I made. Like this was completely stupid. I would rather be unhealthy than um, where I am right now. And like, but then I realized that you know, I'm not. I don't. <laughs> I don't anymore, and I'm really happy with the decisions that I've made. And I just, that's basically all that, I mean, the recovery, it doesn't work unless you try and apply it to everyday life. Because you can say all that you want and all, because, like, I'm, I'm guilty of it, and say everything that they want to hear and then go do it yourself, the, your normal way, but that's not changing. That's not changing the habits that you say you want to change. And, um, you know, um, like I say, it's a constant battle every day and I'm constantly getting better and I'm can't be in a better, I really, I can't be in a better place right now. But, um, you know, body image, like I always thought that I wasn't like tiny enough for when I was skating and, you know, I think that's one of the hardest things that to break. So that's still a working one. But, um, definitely, um, it's improved, but it's definitely, um, probably one of the hardest, I would say. But, you know, in a positive light, like, I couldn't be happier, and everything's really going really well. So great to hear. Mm -hmm. Well, earlier you mentioned that you now coach, and there have even been stories that you're possibly considering returning to competition. Is that true, and what role has skating played in your recovery process? Well, those stories are, like, kind of true. I am skating. I'm through double axle, and I, like, really, for the, like, because, like I said, I, I, like, mentally and physically, I wasn't healthy all until, really, now I feel like this is, like, the time where I can say I am much better. I am healthy. So I, like, I would say I've, like, really committed to myself saying, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to skate for me and just try, you know, and see what I can do. Not to do, not to do anything, you know, just because I love skating. And, um, I'm like, I skated for, I'm pretty sure consistently, like it's been about a month now, you know, and I'm like through double axle and stuff, which I can't believe because I didn't think I'd be able to do that again. And, um, you know, would I love, to get back in competing like next year that if that dream came true and that site was um attainable and like I was able to take those right steps and you know do everything in the right way you know not skipping steps and doing everything that I need to do I would be ecstatic because I would love to compete again in singles and pairs and I keeping all my doors open and um you know, I'm basically just skating for me right now. And if the opportunity comes where I'm ready, I would definitely consider competing and skating competitively again because I love it. And I do coach now a lot. I coach with this, um, I'm an assistant coach with this great coach, Mary Alice Antensteiner. And she is like the mentor that I needed. Like she's really, she's actually been a key role in this recovery for me. 
she's really have because you know she she understands she gets it and the group of girls that I coach is are just amazing these two girls actually made it to sectionals last year and one of them is um, Alexandra Demma and she was great and then the other one her she went to nationals and actually her name's Paige Rydberg and she just won the novice competition novice division in Broadmoor and won the overall like outstanding like novice best skater award and I was just so happy for her and I just love coaching like I am basically choreographing for all her skaters and she helps me like if I'm skating she'll like kind of assist, like coach me and I'm just so happy with everything that I'm doing and I love it so much. You've mentioned your family going through a lot over the past year. How did that conversation go when you told them that you wanted to skate again and were considering keeping your options open for competing? Because I can only imagine that that could be an interesting conversation. <laughs> um, it, it was actually... Because hmm. I never really like said, like, hey, I'm going to start competing. I'm, I'm thinking about that. I never really like sat them down and said, but I've mentioned them, hey, you know, I'm skating. I did this today. You know, I did that today. Um, I mentioned, but I never really sat them down. But then they started to figure it out. <laughs> like, oh, she's actually skating. She has new boots. She has this. <laughs> what is this? So I told them, and they're like, you know, we support you in whatever you do. But, you know, we, you really have a, you know, you really want to focus on what you need to do. We support you no matter what, but we don't want you taking any, you know, setting these weird goals again or anything like that. And they just basically, they support me in whatever I do. They just want me happy and they just want me in a good place. And they love that I'm coaching with her because they feel she's a great coach. Like, honestly, I haven't, I've trained with a lot of coaches and she's one of the top ones that I feel balances training and connection with her students best and she pushes them hard but not too hard she trains them well and it it makes me feel really happy that I'm under somebody that I feel really confident in what they're doing and I'm just really happy that all of that's happening so they support me they were a little they're like okay whatever you want to do and then they like here like okay but you know they support me and they're happy that I'm happy so well, Dave and I are very happy for you, too. We wish you the best of luck when you get back out on the ice. Now, hopefully, we'll see you at some events in the next couple yes. of seasons. Thank you so much, Mary Beth, for sharing your story with us. I think it's going to help so many athletes. Really, you're such an insightful, intelligent young woman, and you have so much to be proud of. Just the way that you speak so articulately about something that so many people, I think, struggle with and try to keep hidden. It seems like you have an understanding of what happened, and that's Truly fantastic. I applaud oh, you for that. Thank you. Yeah. You're really thank brave, you and I think much. we both admire that in you. Yes. Oh, and thank you. So many people admire. So we thank you so much for giving us your time today, and we hope you'll continue to come back. We'll see you out coaching and on the ice this season. Yes. Yes. So thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you guys.